to talk about group theory applied to 2D materials. Okay, thank you, Bruno, for the introduction. I'd like to thank the organization for this invitation. Uh, I will talk about group theory applied to 2D materials, and this uh, presentation now is an introduction. Okay, so I I, I expect many students uh, for this. Uh, kind of course, uh, and uh, so this the, the presentation is self-contained. So if you never know, never saw group theory, I, I will give some introduction today, and tomorrow we will talk about the other stuff, the applied stuff. So let me go. Uh, I will give the credits here for this lady. She was a PhD student in our group, okay? And uh, the works that I will show tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, I did in collaboration with Ado Jorio. Uh, we both work, uh, I was co-advisor and Ado was the advisor of Janaina. And uh, she really did uh, a lot of work putting this presentation together, okay, in other events, and we always use her material. Okay, so I will, this is an overview of our course here, I will try to cover the whole thing here today, this introduction, okay? And tomorrow we will talk about uh, phosphorine systems and uh, TMDs, and I, I will try to, to go to the low frequency modes. Okay, so let, let's start with the symmetry operations. And uh, the group theory is a way to uh, make a systematic study about symmetry, okay? And uh, as we know, we always see in the physics courses, in the material science courses, that we can simplify things just looking at the symmetry. And the symmetry is very important because usually the Hamiltonian of the system has the actual symmetry of that system and that simplifies everything, okay? It it says a lot about your system. Everything that is depends on the geometry, okay? It's inside of those symmetric schemas. So in, in nature, we have a lot of symmetry, okay? Like a single bird or any, mo most of things alive, they, they, they have this kind of symmetries in arts, uh, engineering, uh, so this is this is uh, quite important in nature and uh, the main use of group theory okay uh, here we have orbital symmetry analysis so a lot of selection rules about electronic transitions uh, uh, vibrations okay normal modes of vibrations in crystals and so on and uh, we can predict uh, Raman and infrared uh, activity this was really important before when the ab initio calculations were not so well developed. This is, the, 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 the group theory is getting kind of old fashioned because, because now we can calculate by first principles, a lot of things, but it, it, it's a good tool. It's, it's a very handy, handful tool. Uh, okay, so I will give some, the, the main ingredients that we need to make a group theory analysis, and we start with the symmetry operations, okay? Uh, we have the symmetry elements and we have the symmetry operation, okay? The symmetry elements are usually point, line, a plane, something like, okay, so you have a point where you have, for example, inversion symmetry around that point. You can have a line or a axis where you can have some rotation around this, or you can have a mirror, okay, when you have reflections. And these are the symmetry elements, okay? And then you have the symmetry operation, okay, which is the symmetry operation that you do using that element, okay, that make things looking the same after you do it. 
And this is the this is the tricky. This is the main point. If you do a symmetry operation, your system looks exactly the same as before. That that's the the the, the point. Okay. Uh, here you will have the main symmetry uh, operations. Uh, actually, it's not the main; it's the symmetry operations that we have. I will talk a little bit about all of them. We have the identity, inversion, uh, proper rotation around an axis. We have a reflection. Okay, uh, we we can have this. Uh, rotor reflection which is a rotation through an axis followed by a reflection okay um, these are the the operators i will also talk about this because you have the symmetry operation and we can uh, mathematically uh, uh, represent this as a matrix uh, as an operator okay so identity for example, we have this uh, water molecule, okay? And if you just leave it, it's unchanged. So every group we, we will see, the identity is something that is with everything, okay? It's just don't touch it. This is one symmetry operation. It's the fundamental one. Then you have the inversion, okay? Which is you have an inversion center, and uh, you just multiply all the coordinates which are centered in this inversion center by minus one. So if you do an inversion in this benzene molecule, okay, one goes to four, four goes to one, and so on, but it looks the same after. So this is the inversion. Okay, so the n-fold rotation operation, the CN, okay, this is you have an axis and you do a rotation around this axis. So for example, this in the water molecule, this is a symmetry operation associated to this symmetry element here, which is this axis. Okay? And we do 180 degrees around this axis and you have basically the same object. Okay? Here two becomes one, but okay, so the atoms, they don't have numbers. So I it's the same molecule. We call this C2 lay, uh, axis, okay? The name here is you have the angle of rotation, okay? And then you divide 160 by this angle, and then you have the number 2 in this case, okay? If it was like 120 degrees, in a C3 rotation, you have 120 degrees. So it's 100. 360 divided by 120, okay? Then this is a C2 rotation. We can have a C4 rotation, with which is 90 degrees and so on. This is the C4 rotation. For example, this molecule here, okay? You have a symmetry. We have a rotation axis here, okay? And then we rotate it. All right, okay. Uh, this is more... Uh, you can have more than one rotation, okay? So there is the principal rotation, the axis of rotation. is the highest order axis. So for example, this molecule here, okay, it has a C3 axis here. Actually, we have three C3 axis because we can rotate here. So we have one axis here, ah, sorry. One C3 axis here, so we can do the rotation perpendicular to it, okay? So this is the highest order, okay? And uh, this is the highest N, right? And this is the principal axis, this guy here. And then we have three C2 axis here, okay? Because you can rotate this molecule around this axis, and then one, okay, so this was rotated around... Oh no, this, this was the C3 rotation, but we could rotate this uh, molecule here and change, for example, one to three in a C2 rotation, okay? For example, this molecule here, you have these two different atoms, okay? These are two chlorum atoms, 
and then we have all these oxygen and carbon atoms here. And then we, this is a C4 axis. This is the main axis, the principal axis. Okay, and then we have all the C2 axis here. All right, the mirror. Okay, we can have a mirror reflection in this uh, in these systems. So we have one mirror in the, for example, the H2 molecule. If you look uh, from the top, we have one uh, one mirror here and another mirror here. This is a YZ mirror, and this is a ZX mirror. Okay. Here, both of them are vertical mirrors. They are vertical. They are called vertical mirror mirrors because they contain the main axis. All right. So the main axis is going. So here is the molecule. The main axis is here. These two mirrors, one is here and another is here. So they contain the the main axis. So they are vertical. They are called vertical. Okay. Uh, we can have diagonal mirrors, okay, like this, or di di dihedral, okay. I, I, I this is a I call it di diagonal, but they are dihedral in English, okay. So they are in the diagonal plane, okay. This this is the 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 definition. They bisect the angle between the twofold axis perpendicular to the principal axis. Okay, so the picture just says by itself. Okay, and this is the horizontal mirror. The main axis here in this molecule, so this is a cross here, and the main axis is here. And it has this mirror, which is perpendicular to the main axis, so it's a horizontal mirror. Okay. We have the improper rotation that you do uh, the rotation plus an inversion, okay? Uh, for example, here, you if you make a C4 rotation and then you make an inversion, this, this is possible, okay? This is called improper rotation. You rotate and then you make an inversion. And you have the rotor reflection operation, okay? Uh, It's basically the same thing, but now you do like a, a rotation plus a reflection. So this molecule also accepts this. Uh, you make a rotation, then you can make a horizontal reflection here, and it just stays the same. Okay, so we have all the symmetry operations and the elements. As I said, I, I will not go too much in detail with this, but just to give a glance, okay, this, this is really for very basic, but what we do is uh, we represent the symmetry operations as a matrix. I will not just, just I think every, ev everybody here, we don't need this, okay? But I, I'm going, for example, you do the, this matrix that we call them the matrix representation of symmetry operations, okay? And here is what we do. We apply the symmetry operation to a initial vector, and you have a the final vector. Okay, this can be the coordinate of uh, an atom in your system, for example. Okay, so then the identity is just the the uh, unit in, uh, matrix. The inversion is the negative of the identity. You just have minus one in the diagonal terms. This is the rotation matrix, okay? Uh, this is like in classical mechanics, we know the rotation of the angles and so on. Here is a rotation around Z. So the Z is the main axis, and here we are rotation rotating the, the, the X and Y. So wha whatever is the, the main axis, if it's X, Y, or Z, this will be one in the direction of the main axis, and then we have the angles here. Okay, the mirror reflection. For example, here, this is a mirror, which is in uh, xy plane, in the xy plane, and then we just multiply z by minus one. 
So if you have a Z, this is a mirror here. So this is the, mat the matrix, okay? Uh, the rotor reflection, re uh, then we have this rotor reflection operation. Wha what we do is, it's like a operator's algebra. You just do one operation, then the other one, okay? So you take your system, and then you just multiply both matrix and you have the, the operation. Okay, so let's talk about the groups and why this is a group theory. If you get a, a system, something, okay, that, that thing belongs to a group. And there are some rules to form a group, okay? There's the group that represents the symmetry of that object, okay? So let's see there are some basic uh, rules about this. I, I, if you want, you can interrupt me anytime, so I know I'm going fast. I'm, I assume you understand. Okay. So what's a group? It's the set of symmetry operations. Uh, the set of symmetry of operations form a group G by satisfying the following conditions. So there are four uh, uh, basic conditions, okay? So the product of two elements of the set is itself an element of the set. So it's closed. This is called closure. So if you multiply two elements, it, it has to be another one. Okay, so for example, if uh, I'll give some examples here. You have this associative rule, okay, and this valid for all elements, this has to be, and these are like symmetry operations, okay? This is, for example, if I do C and then I do A, B, okay, it's the same as you do B, C, and then do A, okay? Uh, this is like a rules for a set, as we, we see in mathematics. So the existence of the identity is mandatory. So you, you need, you the identity is always there, all right? And you have to, uh, every element needs the inverse. Because you see, if, if everything is closed and you have the identity, every element needs to have his inverse in inside of the group. So if you do one and then you do it another operation, it, it has to go to the identity because you understand. Uh, I think, okay, so uh, it's, it's quite ob obvious, right? So if, if, you, if you do something you need to have the inverse to go to the to the identity, okay? All right, let's see this group here, this molecule, okay? You have all these operations here. You have the identity. You have uh, C2. C yes, yes, exactly. That that's the words that I was looking for. Thank you. Uh, okay, so we have in this molecule here we have the identity. We have the C two axis here. You can rotate this molecule. We have the X Z plane mirror. Okay, this reflection here. So these things are reflected, and we have another mirror here. So they are both. Uh, vertical mirrors, okay? So we if we do the C2, we just rotate. And then we do the, the YZ reflection, we just do the same. So uh, this is the same as the uh, uh, XZ reflection. I think it's a bad example, but it's, uh, I mean, it's kind of obvious here. It's the same thing. Yes, but uh, even if they are redundant, they you can squeeze. But but you, if you s if you think they are redundant, redundant is mm. exactly. They're the same if you don't have a spin. So, for example, if if you if you apply magnetic field, you can break these time reversal symmetries, and then you have to consider it. Okay. 
All right, so here's the thing. Uh, how do you map? So we have all these point groups here, all right? So all these symmetries are point groups that we have. Uh, we have 32. And then how we map which point group we have. There are these uh, uh, type of schemas, okay, which we find which group we, we are. So for example, this one here is good. For example, if you have li linear molecules, okay, if you don't have any horizontal plane of symmetry, this is an infinite rotation thing. Okay, so you have a linear chain, you can rotate in any angle. This is what we call the C infinite V, for example. And then, for example, this molecule here. Then you have this kind of schema here. I, I will show how to, to do. Okay, so this is a CN. You have a CN axis, N larger than 1. Okay, this is true. This is a C2 axis. We have a C2 axis. Then we go here. It's it's uh, it's a smaller or equal to C3. Yes, that's true. The C2 is not larger than C3. It's a C2, so it's smaller or equal to C3. Yes. So there is a C2 perpendicular to this main axis. No, this is the only C2 axis here. So we go to this answer here. All right. There is a horizontal mirror? No. There is a horizontal reflection? No. So there is a vertical mirror? Yes. And the, the vertical mirror, we have n vertical mirrors? Yes, we have two vertical mirrors. So this is a C2V. Okay? So we just go following this kind of yes or no, and then we go to the proper group that we are looking for. All right, so for space groups, we have not only this, what we call the point group symmetry, but we have the space group symmetry. And uh, they are the same if you don't need a translation. If you need a translation, so they are different. For example, this guy here, if I rotate a C2 around this axis here, okay? I don't have the same because this atom comes here and, and this atom comes here. But if I make a translation, okay, then I have the same thing. Then the, the space group here needs a translation. Then the difference between space groups and, and the point groups is that in the space group I have the, the, the possibility of make translations. Okay? And if I need this translation, the, the space group looks different from the point group. Okay, so the character tables. If you look at a book, in a book, a group theory book, uh, you have to go, so you have to know what is the group. Okay, so you analyze the symmetry of the, of the system. If, if it's a molecule, you just go uh, to the molecule. If it's a crystal, you go to the unity cell, you do the symmetry, elements, you, you will identify the symmetry elements, the symmetry operations, and then you, you, you get the conclusion, okay, this is the group. Okay, this is the group I'm looking for. This molecule belongs to this group. Then the next step, you go to the character tables. Okay? So you go to a book, no, you go to Google today, and then you look at the character table of that group. No. Okay, so the space group can be symorphic or non-symorphic. Okay? Is symorphic if it looks the same as the point group. Okay? If you don't need a translation, it is symorphic. Okay? So I, I will talk about non-symorphic groups. I will give examples okay, in the 2D materials. But basically, it's, it's like if, if it's symorphic, you don't need the translation, and, and the group l just looks like the point group. Okay? We'll get there. Okay, so you go to the character table. Uh, 
which is a table with, with a list of all the symmetry operations found in a group. So you see the symmetry operation here. But we divide the symmetry operations in a class, in classes, okay? Then you have the vertical mirrors, you have the horizontal mirrors, you have the C2 axis, main C2 axis, you have the other C2 axis and so on. So here we have the group and here we have the classes. Why do we have the classes? I, I, I'll get there, but the symmetry is given by a matrix. And what matter is the sum of the, the diagonal terms is the trace, okay? And the trace of the elements of the same class are the same. So you can just pack this inside of this table here. And then we group, okay, the same guys in the, in the, 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 in the class. So here is this thing. This is the group label. These are the irreducible representations. I will explain what's a re irreducible uh, representation. Uh, and uh, here you see the basic functions, which is very, very important. We will get there. And then you see a lot of numbers here inside. And uh, in the top, you see a number and uh, a symmetry operation, for example. Uh, we can have, like, for example, two C3 axes, something like this. Okay, so what is the character symbol? Wha wha what's the character? Okay, let's go. For example, this is a equilateral triangle here. Okay, it has some symmetry operations. We have C3 is the main axis here. So you have the triangle, you have a C3 axis here, you can rotate 120 degrees, okay? All right, and you have the identity first. These are the mat matrix representations of this uh, identity. The C3 plus, so the plus we say is clockwise, and the minus is anti-clockwise. So we have two, three, C3 axis here. One goes in this direction, the other one goes in this direction. They are different. Okay? But you see, for example, if I do C3 plus times C3 plus, this is the C3 minus. Okay, so this is the matrix representation, this is a rotation. This is another rotation, and then we have this diagonal mirror here. This diagonal mirror here, for example, just changes y by min minus y. This is what it does. So this is the matrix. The other planes here, this uh, sigma e and sigma f, they are a little bit more complicated, but you just see how the coordinates, they, they change. So you can do it by hand, okay? Okay. So what we do, we do the block diagonal form, okay? We have the x, y in the plane, okay? And we have the z out of this plane. And you can actually separate these things, okay? And uh, this will be the matrix, the, the, the representation, okay? Which we will call the gamma one and the other one will be the gamma 3. So we have two representations here. And what matter, okay, is the character of the two representations. So, for example, uh, the two-dimensional representation here, we call it gamma 3. So the identity, th the matrix will be the block, the XY block here. For example, the, the identity will have character 2. This is the character. The C3 plus will be minus 1. The C3 minus will be minus 1. They have the same character because they are in the same class. Okay? The sigma D will be 0. Sigma E will be 0. And sigma F will also be 0. They, al they, they also belong to the same class. So 
so they have the same diagonal terms, they have the same character. Okay? The other one is Z, which they have all the same character. It's always one. Okay? So here's the thing. This guy, it, it, this, is, this is a, a triangle which I could not rotate in this axis. For example, it, it has something pointing up. Okay? So the Z, all the operations he, here, just put Z up. Okay? Uh, then this is, the, this is the, 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 the part of the identity. Everybody is one. Okay, so here's the thing. I have these two irreducible representations, and then I have the characters of the gamma one, what I call gamma one, and I have the character of the gamma three. This gamma one is the totally symmetric representation. It's what I call the totally symmetric, okay? All right. But there's something that I, I have to take into account. So there's a rule. The number of, we call it uh, irreducible representations, e equal to the number of classes. For example, I have three classes. One class is the identity. The other one is the C3. And the other one is the mirror, the sigma v, the vertical mirror. Okay? I have three classes. I need to have two, three irreducible representations, okay? So this, this has to be a square matrix here, basically. So there's another rule. The sum of a square of dimensions is, is, is the same as the order of the group. The order of the group here is the, is the number of symmetry operations I have is six. Okay, I have, this group has order six. And uh, the, the sum of the square of the dimension of the, 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 the irreducible representations has to be six. So here I have one, the, the dimension of this one is one. The dimension of the, this one is two. So one square plus two square is five. So the other one will be also one. So I have one, two one-dimensional, and one two-dimensional. So I have one square plus one square plus four s plus two square is like s is, is equal to six. So I know there is a another reducible representation here, which is gamma two. And the 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 dimension the dimension of this representation has to be one. Okay? You see that the, my the, 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 the identity carries the, the, the dimension of the representation here. All right, so there is another rule, which is the orthogonality. This, this is just like rules for matrix, uh, matrices, okay? Uh, here's the orthogonality of the rows. The rows, they are orthogonal. It means if you multiply, okay, uh, the the character of the of the uh, of the rows here, okay, weighted by the the the, the dimension, okay, you have a, a Kronecker delta. If it's the same row, it gives one. If it's if it's uh, different rows, is the sum is just zero. It's like two vectors, all right? So, okay, let's see here. These two rows here, for example, one, uh, uh, let me, okay. This is the, the uh, identity, right? So it has the, 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 the number here, the dimension is one, so one, times one times one, okay? Then we have the C2, two times one times the character of the C3. And then we have this, the mirror, three 
times one times this character here. This is zero because this is not the same rows, okay? So I don't know if you get here again one because I just I have just one element here times this number times this number is here. Then I have two times this number times this number is here. Then I have three times this number times this number. The sum of this is zero because these two lines they are orthogonal. Okay. Then I can do the same between these two lines here. Okay. I have one times two times one here. Then I have two times minus one times this number. Then I have three, so this was here. Then I have three times zero times this number here equals zero. So I have a system now, okay? And I have two numbers here and I have two equations. Then with these relations here, I get to the conclusion that the character of the C3 is one and the character of the mirror is just minus one. And I know that the character of the identity is always one or two, depends on the dimension. So this is my character table. That's the way the character tables are constructed, okay? Of course, this gets more and more and more complicated, all right? Uh, sure. No, no, S students are no specialists or whatever. Okay, so there's here. I know, I know that I need, uh, uh, I know the order of the group. Okay, it's six. Then by looking at the order of the group, I know how many reducible representations I, I, I must have. Yeah. Okay. Mm hmm No, no. <laughs> okay, this is not so. If you go through the book, okay, it's, it's, not, it's not that. Okay, it's just it's linear algebra. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, use the microphone. I don't know if it's uh, 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 obvious uh, for, from your talk, but uh, it's over there, right? So, if, so you have the dimensionality theorem, which is the sum of uh, the square of the identity characters. It should be equal to the number of elements of the group. This is also a consequence of the vector space, so mm -hmm. it's, it's uh, all, all, all well defined. Right? Okay. And uh, okay. Here's the thing. Uh, we can have uh, uh, we can we can work in the orthogonality of the rows and we can the rows and we can also uh, work with the orthogonality of the columns. Okay, it's the same. When it's more complicated than this, we we can do both, okay? Uh, and, uh, all right, let me jump here. Ah, we have this kind of uh, different notations, all right? Uh, this is like the, the, the most uh, crystallographic notation, all right? And we have this notation here, which we call Mulliken notation. Uh, there's some basic rules for the Mulliken uh, notation, okay? Uh, 
if you, if you look at some books, you see the gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3. And if you look at the other group uh, books, you see the A1, A2, or E. Uh, the, the, the advantage of the Mulekin notation is that uh, this notation, they, they, they carry some information about the irreducible representation. For example, okay, if the, if the order, okay, if the size of the, the representation is one, okay, it means if this character here is one, or is two is different. If it's one, you use the letters A or B. Okay. If it's two, you use the letter E. If it's if it's three, you have the letter T. Okay. All right. Let's suppose it's one, and then you use the letter A or the letter B. What's the difference between A or B? So you can have, for example, A one or B one. What's the difference? Okay, the A, the character of the highest rotation axis is plus one. If it's B, the character of the highest rotation axis is minus one. So uh, this is uh, anti-symmetric upon the highest rotation. Then it's B, okay? You can have the subscript one, or subscript 2. So, for example, you, you can have A1 or you can have A2. Or you can have B1 or you can have B2. What's the difference? Okay. If you have the subscript 1, it's because it's symmetric for the next C2 axis or to the uh, vertical mirror. Okay. So, if it's symmetric over the vertical mirror, it's 1. If it's anti-symmetric upon this operation, it's minus 1. For example, B2. What is a B2? It's anti-symmetric over the highest rotation, okay? And then it's anti-symmetric over, uh, open the, the, the vertical mirror or the C2 rotation perpendicular to the highest rotation, okay? Uh, and so on. I, if you have... For example, the the sigma, the, the horizontal mirrors, you can have the, this prime or two primes, if it's symmetric or anti-symmetric. And you can have the substrate G or U, which is symmetric or anti-symmetric upon the inversion. Then you can have, for example, E2, G2, E2, G, and so on. So this, I it looks... Uh, complicated, but it's just a matter of table. It's just a translation of information. Once you get used, it's, it's, it's something uh, that you, you just look and you know. Okay, so this is, this is quite useful because, you know, if, if you know how to read the character tables, uh, just, just in a glance, you look at the character tables and, and you, you, you pick some information that is just encrypted there. Okay, let's do now the basis functions. The basis functions, they, they are very important because the selection rules, most of the selection rules, you just find from the basis functions. So let's go. This is the water molecule, okay? And uh, wha what we, we, we do is the orbitals of vibrations are represented by mathematical functions, okay? So you just represent this by mathematical functions. And uh, how does the symmetry operations affect mathematical, mathematical functions? Okay. How the symmetry of operations just change that function in space? Okay. It's a function of space. All right? And then we find this very useful. I, I, I already talked about this. Okay, let's do this. Let's suppose you have this symmetry of the water molecule and you have a PZ orbital here, all right? And how the identity change? So this, this, is, this is just like uh, if you do uh, the, the any of these operations, this guy here just stays no change, okay? J this is just unchanged. So it doesn't matter which operation you do, this orbital would never change, okay? So it, it 
this guy is the totally is associated to the totally symmetric irreducible representation all right and you see here so this representation here is associated to this z function all right and this is the same for the x square y square or z square they would not change with any of these operations because you know they can change for example minus x to x or minus y to y but if you if you do the square part is the same it looks the same so these functions here they identify with the totally symmetric representation okay let's go something up here yeah, more a little bit more complicated let's take the px orbital okay it's pointing like here if you do the identity or if you take the mirror which is defined by x and z here it doesn't change this this orbital so okay so you have this uh, x orbital is pointing somewhere here if you do the identity it doesn't change anything and if you just make a reflection around this mirror here it also doesn't change so you look at here the character of this representation here is one for the identity and is also one for this vertical mirror xz so this function can be represented by this representation here irreducible representation here because look if I do now the C2, okay, the C2 will change this axis. Just rotate to the other direction. So you have this character here, minus 1, okay? Or if you take this mirror here and do the reflection, it just also, also invert the, the, the direction. So the character is minus 1. So you see here take the x function, an orbital around x direction, and you make the identity or this mirror here, you do nothing. But if you make this operation, this operation, you change the direction. So it, it associates with this. The same for xz. If you get the xz, you see that you have similar conditions. So you you there are, there are more mathematical ways to, to do this. You do the projections, projections of the matrix and so on. But this is very, uh, if, you l if it's ready, here's the thing. There are two, two ways to study group theory. One, you learn how to construct these tables. Okay? There's no time to do this here. But the other one is just learn how to read and interpret the tables. Okay, this, this is most what we are doing here. Okay, the same for if the orbital is here in this y direction, you have the operations that change it and that, that the operation doesn't change it. And the representation that matches this behavior is this one. We can also do the rotations, okay? For example, this is a rotation around Z, okay? And I it looks very much like the, the, the A2 representation. If you look at the mirrors or if you look at the C2, some of them just let the rotation as they are. Some of them just change the rotation so you identify. Then you have this linear rotate. You have the linear and the rotations column, and you have the quadratic column. Okay. Uh, for example, the x y, x y, here, you can get an orbital like this. Okay, a d x y orbital. All right, and you see how it changes up with the, the 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 symmetry operations, and you see that this guy here is that represent more. Because you know these two mirrors, they they just change things. Uh, okay, then you have these other orbitals, uh, the the d z two, this one, or you have the d z d x two minus uh, y two, 
and then uh, we 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 can just make things uh, more s more geometrical here but you can l learn and see how uh, how these symmetry operations change the orbitals and how these orbitals are represented here so if you have an orbital with some symmetry okay and you, you know that symmetry, you look at the character table and see, oh, okay, so this is the symmetry of my, my orbital. So it, it, it would be represented, okay, by this irreducible representation here. So you say, okay, this orbital is linked to this guy. Okay, so the xy orbital is, li is linked to this guy. The x2, the z2 orbital is linked to this guy. All right, uh, I'm going to almost the end of this, and the, the time is good. Okay, so once you have your character table, okay, you have the characters, you have the symmetry operations, you have the irreducible representations, you have the base functions, you find this in any book of group theory, it's all calculated, okay, it's all in tables. Then you go to the book, you see, you, you know the symmetry of your, of your system. You go to the book, look at the character table, and what you do with this. If you do infra optical spectroscopy, okay, there are two basic rules. The infrared are associated with the, 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 the normal modes which activate the infrared ac activity, okay? For vibrational spectroscopy, they are associated with the linear base functions. For Raman, they are associated with the quadratic base functions. Then le let's just have an idea why. Okay. So here's the thing. The infrared activity, this is just a dipole uh, uh, interaction. Okay, In the first order is a dipole interaction. Right, so you have the the Hamiltonian has this form. This is the electric field, and you have the dipole moment, okay. Uh, and uh, the matrix element for this uh, excitation, okay, you have the initial state, which is the ground state, okay, is fully symmetric, and you have the the final state, which should be your normal mode associated with this final state, and you have this dipole. Uh, moment here, okay, which is associated to the direction of your dipole, all right? So this I is the thing. The representation which is associated to your dipole, electric dipole, okay, I it, it goes, it, it is associated to a representation which we call a vector representation which is just like x, y, or z, okay? Here's the thing. Your dipole is in some direction, all right? Which is x, y, or z. So that vector, okay, is associated with your Hamiltonian, all right? Then what happens is if you take the uh, the this representation, and you do the, pr the, the product, okay, with the initial state, it must contain the final state. You have initial state, okay, Thi this is algebra. Like, you have the initial state, and then you do some symmetry operation with the, the dipole interaction, okay, and then you go to the final state, all right? It means then, if, if you do the vector, okay, the final state must be contained in that inside of that product. Okay. Uh, this this is a, a very uh, simple rule. And then what we have is the initial state is fully symmetric, and then we just have the vector state. And this is how the infrared modes, the infrared activity, will be related to modes that transform like vectors. For example, here, uh, you have to be careful because I, I'll get to the point, but for example, what, 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 which representations here 
they associate with just vectors, okay? Just coordinates. Is A1, B1, or B2. So in this system, a vibrational mode to be infrared acti active, okay? It has to be associated to A1, B1, or B2. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, pure ignorance. So what will happen there is, in the case of water, the one that is associated, the vibrational mode that is associated with the A1 will be the highest peak in the infrared spectra, that will be correct. And then the, the other ones will be having a, a, a dipole transition, but those, those, those oxid excitations will be with lower intensity. Yes. So that's, that's directly, just by symmetry, you will be able to say that? Well, okay, so. This is a good point. So the, the, the group theory just forbid things, okay? If, if it's zero, if, if group theory says it's zero, then it's zero, okay? So the zero is, is serious. If it says it's allowed, it doesn't mean you observe it. Then you have the matrix elements, okay? So what's forbidden, it is really forbidden. Am I right? <laughs> okay. That's the ab initial guys here. I'm always afraid of them, but. <laughs> sure. Because in many cases, I, you know, I am a semiconductor person that always avoided group theory. But, uh -huh. you know, I, I, there's a TD, if you include the spin or not, there are representations that people, you know, it's approximate, right? And you never really do it, you know. Sure, you can, you can break this symmetry. If you break the symmetry, you can relax the selection rules. Something that was zero is not zero anymore. So if you have, like, defects or kind of perturbation, you can break the symmetry of the system, then you can relax the selection rules. But if your system is perfect, okay, and group theory forbids something, uh, I think it's, it's safe to say that is really, you don't see it, all right? So, okay, so my last piece here is the Raman spectroscopy, right? The Raman spectroscopy is different from the infrared. You have the, the incident uh, light, then you make uh, uh, an excitation in your material. For example, if you involve phonons, you have this uh, uh, vibration, quantum of vibration being created, okay? And then the, the system decays, emitting again a photon. Uh, then the what we have in Rama, we have the induced dipole moment, okay? And this is the Raman polarizability, all right? And the, the vibration modulates the polarizability, okay? And then what matters is, is this uh, induced dipole moment, all right? Because the, the vibration just modulates the polarizability. And then we have, we have this algebra, which is, uh, is in, the, in these uh, books. We have the Rayleigh scattering, which is just the, 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 the same frequency. Or you can have the Stokes, because this is the vibration uh, component of frequency, okay? We have the Stokes scattering, which is when the, the frequency of the outcome light, it's uh, subtracted by the vibrational mode, the, the, the frequency of the vibration, so the system uh, absorb energy, okay? You create uh, uh, excitation inside of your system, or you have the anti-Stokes scattering when uh, you just annihilate a phonon, or in other words, you your system decrease one level in the vibrational spectrum. Okay, and the Rama, uh, the the Rama, the Rama Hamiltonian, okay, is given by these terms here, which we have the the omega plus plus minus omega v, and we have the incident and the scattered light. Okay. And the point is, 
the perturbation is a dipole perturbation, all right? And then we have this uh, 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 polarizability matrix. So the final state and the initial state, this, is a, this, is, this is gives the, the information about the normal mode, and the initial uh, state gives the uh, ground state with full uh, symmetry, okay? And then, here's the thing, the vibrational mode is Raman active if the direct product of the representation of the initial state with the presentation of the Raman perturbation contains the irreducible representation of the final states. So the final state must be contained here, okay? Oh. And I think it's missing, but the point is, now what we have is, you have incoming light, outcoming light, okay? And you have two vectors now involved. And you have to see how these vectors come. For example, you can have in, in Raman that you excite in X and then you emit in Y. Or you just excite in X and then we emit in X again. And these two things, okay, must be correlated to the initial and final states. So at the end, the Hamiltonian, the Raman Hamiltonian, okay, you have to observe the square functions, okay? This is the thing. And uh, they transform, so with the irreducible representations that you have the square functions. Then if you go to the character table, you see which of these modes here could be Raman active, okay? Actually all of them, because all of them have uh, square functions here. I'll give examples, better examples than this. But you see, if you have a quadratic basic function, that mode could be Raman active, all right? Um, so I have a nice example here, but we don't have time. I just jump to the, uh, I'll talk this ab uh, about this tomorrow. Uh, but then this, this is what we do. We take something real, okay, and we see what is, what is Raman, what is infrared, looking at the character table, something like this. Okay, so my time is over. Tomorrow I will start with the TMDs and then we go to the phosphorine uh, systems. Is there any more questions? No, okay. So okay. let's thank the speaker again. All right, thank you. So, okay, the next speaker is Professor Alexander Rocha, which the title of his talk is a secret to me.